I'm Jan Salstrom. Uh, I am a ceramic artist here at um, Ava in Studio 207. We share this space with um, four other potters or ceramic artists. And um, I got started in um, I got started in around 2011 because in my neighborhood around the corner was a community art center and they taught ceramics and so I thought well that sounds like fun uh, working full-time as a nurse midwife um, I'm now retired and playing in the clay much more um, but um, I started with sculpture as my first class mm -hmm. uh, and we had a live model and uh, so it was sort of a coming at it from a different direction and then I started taking some classes on the wheel uh, for more functional work and then when I moved here to um, uh, and it was very very part-time just occasional sort of uh, situation and then when I moved to Vermont I didn't have access to a wheel at Earth Star so uh, that we did all hand building slab work mm -hmm. so that's where I got into that uh, which is what I'm currently doing and then um, one of the fellows that also went to Earth Star did Naracomi work, which is like, this is an example of it. It's colored clay mm -hmm. with a clear glaze. Um, and so the pattern is the clay body itself. So it's a much more lengthy process in that you make a block of clay that has your pattern and then you slice it and if you slice it really thinly you can inlay that or cut it into whatever design before you inlay or you can slice it thicker and use the whole slab to build your form so you start out with making the colors if you want um, mm -hmm. a color that's not a natural clay or you can use just the natural clays so i have i have a block of natural clay marbled uh, that I have used. I don't have the example here, but this is, I don't know if that shows but yeah. under the um, saran wrap. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so this has all just natural clays that I've marbled together. So there's a wedging technique mm -hmm. that can be used to do this. And so it very much looks like natural stone yeah. when, you're, when you have it fired. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, a, in terms of a very clear uh, pattern that is uh, manipulated, so it doesn't catch so often. So, uh, so that's one of the examples. Um, so you can do stripes, you can do um, uh, patterns similar to uh, quilt work. Um, and uh, have the rice sock on to help keep it flat <laughs> and the foam around the edges to help keep it curled up as it's drying. Mm -hmm. So this is another piece that has been inlaid with yeah. like a blue marbled uh, piece. And mm -hmm. so keeping it from cracking on the edges yeah. is a major event. So the drying process is slowed uh, for that purpose. So I think I can move the foam off and put that back. So this one's ready to come out of the foam. Put this on a slab. This is a similar to what you just saw, only mm -hmm. it's a um, more of a square plate and a round bowl. So you could make like a set that all matches with like the same the same block, block of clay. And once that block is gone, it's gone. You can't yeah. reproduce it. The other thing too is the pattern will often change each slice mm. as you go through the block. Yeah. So it's not going to be, you know, each piece is not going to be exactly the same. One of the things I like to do is to allow the clay to move in the process of making whichever piece you're making. So I'm sort of listening to the clay as I work with it and, and really enjoy um, uh, the interchange. It's not a one-way yeah. street because sometimes you want it, you have something in mind and if you're really set on it and you want to make the clay do that and the clay doesn't want to do that, <laughs> it's just going to be a battle. So it's like, 
give it up and just like go with where the clay yeah. wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> so each piece is unique. Um, and um, and that way, and I, I enjoy that. So there's, there's, you can make a set, but it's, it's yeah. not gonna be exact. Yeah. You know, for sure. So the other piece I wanna check on, I did a workshop at St. Gaudens this past weekend. So pretty there. And it's gorgeous, gorgeous. And they have an artist in residence and they do sculpture workshops in the summertime. And so I got a taste back on some doing some sculpture, mm -hmm. which I really, really enjoy. This is from the first um, uh, workshop that I did there. That's beautiful. Um, and so this is a low fire clay with an iron oxide that's been burnished. So it doesn't have a glaze. Um, and, uh, and so it's been bisque fired twice. So I had such fun, went back, did another workshop <laughs> this past weekend, which was a two day workshop. And my friend modeled for me. And so I took her picture. The workshop was to do a bas relief of a profile. So that's Dana and this is Dana. <laughs> Do you enjoy going to workshops even though you've been working in like your own technique for a while? Oh, absolutely. I love learning new mm -hmm. stuff and you can never stop learning in my opinion. It's just like, you know, it just gives you more options of how you want to work. So, or what you want to work on. So that's Dana. I don't know how, uh, if the shadows can come. Yeah, you can, you can see pretty well. Come through. So, um, and then here is the photograph. That's awesome. So I just like, oh, what fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the process of just letting this piece dry and um, trying to figure out how to make the hook for the back of it so it yeah. can hang. And that's, you know, there's various ways to do that in terms of carving a notch for, for something to, to hang on. And um, so, uh, and then deciding, you know, am I gonna finish it the same way as the other one, yeah. with the iron oxide. I've learned that glaze doesn't work on carving because I did, I did this piece and the glaze was too glossy mm -hmm. and the carving got lost. Yeah. You know, you can't really see the details in it at all. You yeah. Know? So you learn from your mistakes. <laughs> And so you make a lot of mistakes, you learn a lot. <laughs> so you work with this, the technique, what is it? The Narakomi. Narakomi? Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a Japanese technique of working with colored clay. Yeah. And, um, and it really, uh, it, when the, the history of it, when it came over to England and they started doing it in England, they called it agate wear. Mm -hmm. So you might also see work that's called agate yeah. wear, the same. How did you start working in this? I, I saw a piece that was gorgeous on the wall at Urstar, and I said, oh my gosh, how did he do that? Yeah. And that's when I met the artist who made it, and John was willing to teach me. So, you that's know, awesome. it was a blessing for sure. <laughs> and he's so um, detailed oriented and, and a really good instructor. So, um, so it was really nice to be able to see something that you've never seen before and then learn how yeah. to do it. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite piece that you've created? Um, I'm not here. Um, I do have some favorites and, or sometimes they're like personal milestones, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. like I've never done this particular technique before. So I'll keep the first one I do of that, yeah. you know, or an example of, of it because I've been moving through various techniques mm -hmm. and various uh, ways to work with the colored clay. So this is only one way. Uh, there's uh, other artists in the area who have developed other ways, you know, to cut the slab. Yeah. Instead of cutting the slab straight, you can cut the slab in a wave 
re-flatten it. It makes the colors change when you do that, and then you can carve into it. And then that takes it through mm -hmm. another layer, and then you can flatten it again. So then you've got a whole different, yeah, look to the clay, you know. So there's, there's, I just like exploring. For me, it's a wonderful way of exploring and uh, uh, have your hands in physical matter that you can shape and create art, you know, get inspired with. Is there anything else you'd like to share about um, your work or uh, what you're doing here at Ava or anything? Um, I would just encourage if someone's like thinking about maybe playing in the clay um, to not wait. Just go ahead and start. Even if you've got a busy schedule, you're still working full time, you know, whatever. If it's something that you would really think you could enjoy, just take a class and start. Because then by the time you get to where you do have more time, you, you've already got a passion, yeah. you know, that you're into and you can take it a step further. So it doesn't matter how deeply you go into it or how much on the surface you play with it. It's just like, go ahead and do it. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.